Hey everybody, this is Lori Mangold and I'm excited. It's month one, a $5 quilt. We're back on, on and schedule. We have it all set up and I am super, super excited about this year's program. So we're going to get started. Um, if you haven't watched the guideline rule video, please go and do that. But we are going to get started and jump right in. In San Antonio, we have a shop hop in March. So if you, and even in Katy, if you want to come over, it is the last weekend that goes from the... March 23rd to April 2nd. April 2nd. And um, all that information is on our website. So we'd love for you to participate. We also are getting our classes back up and running. We're getting both creative classes and a lot of our new owner classes are getting back on the schedule and caught up. So we hope to be up to full speed here very shortly. So $5 quilt. You just picked up your first block and in that block you have instructions. Okay. On this side are your cutting instructions. On this side are your assembly instructions. Some months if the cutting is, is complicated you may have a full thing of um, instructions and a separate cutting diagram but this month we were able to put it in both. So the first thing you want to do is sort of pull your fabrics out and I always recommend before we start anything is to pre-shrink your fabrics. What do I mean by pre-shrink? Well, I'm going to pull my ironing board, little mini ironing board over here and just demonstrate for you. So when the fabric comes out of the, in the kit, we always cut it at least a half inch, but most of the time an inch bigger than it needs to be. And we recommend that you just take a little bit of water, come on water, there we go, and dampen it a little bit, let it soak in, and then you're going to take a hot iron, and you are, this is when you can iron. We can move back and forth. Our goal here is to dry the fabric. So what this does is it's going to relax the fibers we're going to dry them, which will actually draw the fibers back in, okay? And then I always like to come back with some best press. So here's the best press. It is a light sizing, and it's going to add some crispness back to your fabric, kind of close those fibers up even more so they stretch less. And I use it on everything in my sewing because I love the way it leaves the fabric. This one is scent free, which is what I need because scents bother me, but we also have it in several other scents. I usually put it in my little spritz bottle because I just need a fine little bit of it. And I take this and that much is all I need. I sprayed it and then I'm going to press it again and let that set in. And that's just going to give me, it's not as stiff as starch, but it just adds a little bit of, um, crispness to the fabric and gets it back to almost like it came out. All right. So that's how I prep my fabrics. Now, now it's time to cut the fabrics. Now, what do we need for cutting? Okay. In this program, I'm going to highly recommend two size rulers that will get you through most everything. One is a six and a half inch bias square bias, meaning there's a line that goes point to point. Okay, we like the creative grid because it has the non-stick slippy things already built into it. It also has two, basically you work from both different sizes. So you have your full inches on one side and your half inches on the other, which I'll show you here in a minute, which makes it super um, easy to use. Six and a half, when we're working with 12 and a half inch blocks, six and a half is going to allow you to cut all those increments from six and a half down. And so it's, it's very convenient for both the small pieces and, you know, up to the six and a half inch pieces. The other thing we're going to have to do is cut strips out of the fabric. And I like when I'm working with a 12 inch block, I like to have, I don't, if you're going to be cutting large, you know, pieces off a bolt, you want a 24 inch ruler. But when I'm working with smaller pieces like this, I like one, this one happens to be six and a half by 12 and a half, perfect size. 
Um, you can do an eight and a half by 12 and a half. You know, we have all different sizes, but you need one that will let you cut strips also. And again, it's creative grid. It has the non-slip dots. It, you can measure for half inches from one side and full inches from the other. Highly recommend. If you don't, if you're just beginning and you don't have anything, start with these two rulers and you're going to get through this program pretty much without having to buy too many others. A good rotary cutter. This one is 45 millimeters and that's going to get you uh, most, you know, fine for when you're doing one or two layers of fabric. If you're like me and I cut large amounts of fabric at the same time to cut kits, I buy a 60 millimeter, which means the blade's quite a bit bigger, but a 45 is going to work fine. We also carry them with um, a blade that you retract to expose or that you squeeze the handle to expose. If you're a beginner, I like to squeeze the handle. That way, if you put it down, it automatically closes and you don't lay your um, rotary cutter down with the blade open where you could nick yourself if you hit it wrong or if, if you kick it, uh, knock it off the table and it lands on your foot, you'll probably be heading in for some stitches if you didn't have shoes on. Okay, so we want to make sure you ha are safe. And then we need, and I've got a big one underneath me, but you need a cutting surface. This is a, um, it's a self-healing mat. And yes, there are measurements on it that sometimes we use. We use mostly the lines to make sure we have our pieces down straight when we're cutting. But um, I recommend, this is a 24 by 36, which gets you um, the biggest piece you'll probably have to deal with. But there is a, what is it, 24 by 18? The next size down if you're a beginner, and actually I'm gonna sneak out here, I'm gonna show it to you. Um, we have them in different types, but this is the, if you're a beginner, beginner, and you're not sure you're gonna really get into this, this will get you through the program without a problem because it's plenty big enough for everything you're gonna cut. It is approximately 18 by 24, I was right. Yay! Yay. Okay, so um, that kind of covers what you're gonna need. You're also gonna need uh, thread. Okay, we recommend either the, we have three different brands here. We have Mettler and we have it in 100% cotton and um, cotton coated poly. And both of these are very good for the program. I know that if you, a lot of people say cotton with cotton and that's fine. We have two different kinds of cotton. But um, I like the Mettler, the, the cotton coated poly because it doesn't get my machine as fuzzy if I'm doing a, you know, a lot of power sewing. And then one of the favorites for quilters is always Aurifil. And that's because it's a two ply 50 weight, which means it, it's str as strong as, as this fabric, but it's not quite as thick because it's only got two plies twisted together. It's made in Italy, very high quality, very um, long, what they call long Egyptian staple, which reduces the amount of, um, you know, variance, I guess, in how it's put together. And it's very smooth. You don't get a lot of fuzz with it. Uh, we have it in, you're going to need a neutral color. Depending on which color option you're going to do, I personally would use the cream on these two and this one probably cream also. You could use a very light gray and, and the white would work also um, with any of these. So um, any of your neutral colors, beige, white, cream. Last but not least, you need a good iron, okay? When I'm working with small pieces, I love to work with a small iron. It keeps me from going off the edge and getting a little too crazy. So we love these little irons um, for pressing pieces. We also, I like the Panasonic portable one um, because I can take it off its base and so if I have to get in weird positions with it, I don't have a cord that's chasing me around. But having a good hot iron will make a difference too. All right. That's my infomercial, okay? So let's talk, let's get cutting this block, all right? I'm gonna need my pressing surface, so I'm gonna leave this like this. So when I look at fabric number one, um, you'll see on your thing, it's gonna show you the color fabric right on your cutting. So if you don't know what, which one is blue, then you can see the color is right there. And then this diagram shows you how it's gonna be cut. So when we and look at it, we're going to cut a strip off of it and then we're going to cut strips going the, we're actually going to start with two strips and then cut strips on one of them going the opposite way. Okay. 
So when I first, I've already pre-shrunk this, when I first start to cut, I need a nice straight edge to start with. You never want to just cut the fabric out of the kit and think that edge is straight. Trust me, when we're cutting hundreds of kits every month, we're not trying to be straight, okay? We're trying to get them as close. You have an extra inch um, on most of your fabric. So I'm just gonna lay this down. Don't worry about what's going on anywhere else. Nothing is straight on this. You have pre-shrunk it. We're creating our first straight line. I like to have about an eighth of an inch exposed. I take my rotary cutter, I open it. Notice how I'm holding my ruler. I've got my fingers on it. I'm gonna press this against the ruler and I'm gonna slide and I'm gonna pull that piece off. Now, my I'm going to cut, the first one I'm gonna cut is a strip. You cut it the size that's in your directions. And I'm gonna flip this around because it's an even number. So one, two is right there. There, I'm going to line that up and all I'm paying attention to at this point is that this black line is right on the edge of my fabric. And I'm going to cut this strip, okay? And I'm going to set that aside. Now I'm going to cut the next size strip, which is a little bit fatter. And I am going to lay that down and I'm going to cut this one. Now notice this is extra, so you can see we do provide extra. Uh, I'm just gonna toss that aside. Now this we're going to leave long because we are gonna strip piece this and we have a skill builder written in your kit and we just did a skill builder video on how to strip piece. So if you've never strip pieced before, please watch that, okay? This one we have to cut into four, uh, let me look two inch pieces. So again, I have to, um, this time I'm gonna make sure my straight lines are on both top and bottom because I have I have cut both these sides, so I want them straight. And I'm gonna clean cut this edge. And now I need four segments out of there. So I'm just gonna go, and it says I need them to be two inches. So now I'm gonna line up this, this, and that as best I can and I'm gonna cut one. Let's get that lined up. And if you're having trouble lining it up, don't be afraid to flip it over and clean cut it again. Because things don't always stay straight. Three, okay, and four. All right, so there's my four. This is extra, bank it. You may make a boo-boo. This may be big enough to get you through a boo-boo. So keep a little a little bag of scraps that are big enough and um, you it may save you one day, okay? So now I have a strip and I have four pieces from color number one. That was pretty easy. Color number two is the green. I have already pre-cut this and I need four um, now, what I want to show you is when you are doing this, okay, notice that I have 9 inches this way and 12. Can you see that, Michelle? Yep. 9 and 12. So when you go to put this down, you want to make sure your 9 inch is, make it match the picture. 9 inch this way and the 12 inches this way. And don't fret if it's not exactly 9 by 12. We're going to clean cut this. We're cutting pieces out of this. But if you start in this direction, you may end up with the cutting it wrong, okay? And again, there's nothing to line up here. We have pre-shrunk this. All the edges are distorted. So the first thing we're going to do is take our ruler and we're gonna clean cut this edge, okay? Throw that aside and then we need to cut four, four inch by five and a half. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is the four inch piece. So I'm going to take my four inch, which if you think about it, four and four is eight and you've got nine inches. There's your extra inch. So I'm going to start with four and I'm going to do another one at four. And again, I'm making sure this line matches up. Whoops, there I go. And that's extra. Now, I have to now cut them 
at five and a half. I like to stack them. The good news is it makes it go faster. The bad news is if you make a mistake, you ruin both of them at the same time. <laughs> but I'm going to, again, I'm using, now I'm lining this up to make sure those are straight. I'm going to clean cut and then I am going to flip this over. And now I've been cutting um, full inches. If I flip my ruler over, notice that now the black dots are halves. If I go this way, I can read the white dots and they're full numbers. I want to flip it so I'm reading the half numbers and I need five and a half, which is right there. And I'm going to slide that up and I'm going to make sure this, this, all the lines are even and I'm going to cut and then I'm going to move it over and I'm going to cut another one. Okay. Perfect. And there's my extra. I'm going to toss aside and then I have those four pieces. So, okay. What I do with my, oh, they're over here. <laughs> I'll just toss those up there. All right. And this month we only have three colors but we have two pieces because we need a strip and we need a square and it was just easier to give you two separate pieces than to try to give you, you know, because if I cut it this way, all of this would be extra. So we just did it this way. So this one needs to be cut down to two and a half inches wide. I'm not worried about how long it is because we're going to strip piece it and we're going to sub cut it. So I'm just going to clean cut an edge and then I'm going to turn and it needs to be, what is it, two and a half. So I'm back to my half. I find my two and a half black dot and I line that line up. And look at that. I can cut that. And I now have a two and a half inch strip. Okay. And then the last thing I need to cut is a square. And I need this to be a five and a half inch square. Now, this is where I'm going to actually use my square ruler for this because that will be just easier to do. So again, if I can read the white numbers, I'm looking at 4 inch square, 3 inch square, 2 inch square. If I can read the black numbers, I'm doing half inch. We need it to be 5 and a half, which is down there's the intersection for the 5 and a half. Well, I am going to start for the first two sides making sure my five and a half is up in the fabric because I want to cut all four sides. So I've got five and a half in here. I have extra on these two sides. So I am going to go zoop, and I'm going to go zoop. All right, I have two sides clean cut. Now I'm going to flip it around. We do a lot of flipping in this. Now I'm going to put the five and a half inch line right on the corner, make sure my lines five and a half five and a half. Looks good to me. And then I'm going to cut this way and I'm going to cut this way. I have cut all four sides and I have a perfect five and a half inch square. Okay. So got our cutting done. Now I'm just going to quickly show you some assembly and how it goes together and then we'll be good to go. All right. Step number one is the strip piecing. Again, I encourage you to watch the strip piecing video. But we're going to take and look at, they're not the same width, and that's okay. That's supposed to be this way. We have a two inch blue and a two and a half inch white. I am going, I sewed this a quarter inch down the full length. Now I'm going to press it so that the blue is on the top. I'm going to put it down because that's the darker fabric. And I'm going to flip this open, right? And I'm going to press right against the seam. Notice I'm not going off the edges as little as possible. This is where having a smaller ruler help, or iron helps. And I've got that strip set pressed. Okay, pretty cool. Now I have to cut this into, I'm reading this upside down. Let me just check. Um, four two and a half inch pieces. So it should measure four and a half this way now. And so I need to cut two and a half out of it. We're going to cut four of them. So I am going to line up my, my line on the seam. The Stigill video will explain why. 
I make sure, because every cut that I make should be perpendicular to the seam. I'm going to clean cut this. I don't care about the outside edges. And I'm going to flip this over, and now I'm going to, I need to be able to read my black, two and a half. And I'm going to put that so this is on the seam. The two and a half is here. Let me double check. Got four, two and a half by four. Check it before you wreck it. Yep. Measure twice, count once. Two and a half. Okay, two and a half. And one more, two and a half. That. Notice every time I have lined up the seam with the two and a half inch line perpendicular, and now I have four two and a half inch segments. Look at that, okay? Now, I cut all of these two by four inch pieces. So the next thing we're going to do in the instructions is sew those. But if you look at the picture, they're facing each other. They're what we call mirror images. So you always want to, and I didn't bring my board in, um, you always want to lay those out before you sew them. So if I look at this top one, it is going to go like this and I'm going to have this on this outside piece. Then if I look at this one, it's going to go like this and have that on the outside piece. The bottom one is going to be like this. And I know I cut two more at least. <laughs> They're, hiding. They're hiding. And that's going to go like that. And then this one's going to have this on the outside, but it's going to be up, isn't it? It's like a jigsaw puzzle and you want to lay it out because if you don't lay it out, then um, what do you call it? You are going to have issues with when you go to put it together, things won't be in the right place. So you're going to sew these pieces together and in your instructions, I have little arrows showing you which direction you are going to press. Okay. Okay, so you see the little arrows? So when you sew this, you are going to press towards the solid blue piece, okay? And you're going to sew all four of those together. Then you're going to come back and you're going to sew between them one of your blue pieces. Green. Green, blue, robin's, robin's egg blue. Egg. <laughs> it's that, almost that time of year. Usually we've seen robins by now. I haven't seen any this year. Okay, and you're going to sew this together so you will have your top and bottom row done. Okay, so makes sense, right? Then you're going to sew a row. I'm going to move these down just a little. Can you still see, Michelle? Yeah, okay, you're going to then lay this row out, and this is going to go like this and this, and your little square is going to go right in the middle. Okay, so Row one, row two, row three, once you get all that sewn together, then you're going to sew your rows together. And again, it's just lay this out. And what I do, I flip this over like this, I line up top and bottom, I sew it, I bring it back, I flip this one over, then I flip the whole thing over and this whole thing over, get it all pressed, and then I have my row done. So I like laying this out. We actually will have in class, hopefully, some boards, felt boards that you can lay it all out on so you can take it back and forth to your sewing machine, okay? Now the only other gotcha, when you sew this one, you are gonna press these seams towards the outside. These seams will be pressed towards the inside. And next month, we'll, we're going to talk a lot about matching seams. But when you do that, and I'm going to pull this one down, when you do that, you end up with your seams going in opposite directions. See how this one's going that way and this one's going this way. When you go to sew your rows together, you're going to, there's a little ridge there, and you're going to put those ridges so that they stick right together, they're snugged right together, and put a pin on each side of that seam and do it again here so that when you sew, you're going to be looking to get that perfect little match point right there. See how all four of those kiss each other. 
and there's no gaps or there's no overlaps. And we'll talk more about that in month two. I don't want to overwhelm you in month one and have all of you beginners just go, nope, this is not for me. <laughs> and there are no quilt police. Here. There are no quilt police. Your block, when you get it sewn like this, should measure approximately 12 and a half inches. If you are type A, do not tear it apart 10 times if it does not. There are reasons it may or may not, and we're gonna, when we talk about matching seams we're, next month, we're also gonna talk about why it might measure less. But the good news is, and in the end, when you go to sew it all together, it's all gonna fit. So no stress, this is supposed to be a fun program. As you progress through the year, your skills are going to improve. You're going to learn all new skills. You're going to learn about half square triangles, quarter square triangles, all those wonderful things. And when you get done, you'll be surprised at what an accomplished quilter you will be. Okay, that is month one. Um, I'm excited. Um, we're going to do a video on uh, the advanced option that will start in month three. And so if you're interested in uh, being challenged a little more. Stay tuned, watch that video, and otherwise we'll see you next month.